last worlds gave me PTSD, so I'm trying to think too much about worlds now. I feel like everyone has their fears and like a lot of problems. And for me, I'm just afraid that I'm not gonna play well at worlds and that I'm gonna make a lot of mechanical mistakes or that I'm gonna make a lot of decision making mistakes or maybe my champion pool won't be right. And you know, maybe it's just like, I'm not even good enough. I think that's, that's my biggest fear is just that I'm not good enough. And I just never want to, I never want to be the reason why the team can't proceed at Worlds and make it out of groups or make it further. So it's pretty it's scary that Worlds is coming up soon, but it's also really motivating. And I do think that we are capable of winning Worlds. I think NA is super strong right now. All the top teams are fucking good. All, every match we play versus a playoffs team feels extremely close. And I don't even think we're bad. I mean, I think we are slumping right now. We should be the best team as usual, but the playoff teams are really good and the level of competition has gotten really good. So there's a lot of added pressure and there's also a lot of room for improvement. So yeah, when Worlds comes around, Unless something, I don't know. I'm just afraid of the worst, you know, that I just go and I blow it again. And uh, just working really hard to make sure it doesn't happen. Being a pro, is a lot more taxing on your time and it's a lot more demanding of just like your personal determination, your discipline, your motivation, your focus from day to day. And you have to have a lot of drive to be a pro. Boy, like if you're a streamer, I could have easily been, you know, like 20 or 30k viewers and just be happy with that kind of viewership. But I always wanted to grow and just, the thing, like you have a lot more flexibility where you can just do a week off as a streamer or, you know, you can go hard or you basically just take it whatever pace you want. But being a pro, you're just go, 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 especially if you're on TSM. And yeah, sometimes it feels like shit, but most of the time it feels really good. So that's why I like being a pro a lot more. I've actually never had any regret or any sort of missing streaming since I've come back. It's actually the other way around where when I was a streamer, I felt like a part, part of my life was missing and I didn't have, I just didn't have a, a purpose to my life. I think when I'm a pro, I find a lot of fulfillment and I really love, I just love it. I love competing. But when I was a streamer, I felt aimless and yeah even though i have bad days as a pro and recently like tsm i think we've been slumping it never crossed my mind to that i would miss being a streamer when double f first came back to the team in the beginning of summer uh it was similar to what i expected he fit into the team really well because we all knew him we're all friends with him and he was quick to adapt to kind of the team environment and the one thing I really noticed that was super different was he just had a couple like random misplays or solo queue moments where he's going ham or he's going for kills when as a team we're like, you know, Peter, take the tower, take the dragon, you know, take, take the objective. But when you play so much solo queue, <clears throat> so many hours a day, you, you get into that mentality of just playing for kills. So that was the only thing we really had to like get off of him was <laughs> get into focus on objectives again and think a little bit less about kills. But um, I, I wasn't too worried going from you know, winning a split and having a roster change because on the other hand, we also want to split with double lift uh, even more, I guess, convincingly or e we looked even stronger that split. So um, yeah, I think we've done okay with them so far. What else, what else feeling on the tree truck yesterday? It just reminds me of that. They're like tree trunks, dude. Oh, I almost fell over. How come you guys got this on We're just hey, been waiting. Up. You wanna join me? <laughs> Mr. Wang? What are you looking at? Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, 
keep your eyes on the phone, dude. Way shed. Way shed. You should have base with me, base, bro. Three, two, one, way shed. Yeah, let's do it. All right. No. Three, three two, two, one, one way shed. This is it. They didn't look good against Dignitas, kind of got slammed by them. And yes, they beat Echo Fox, but this is a, a top level team playing one of the worst teams in the league, and it wasn't the level of dominance that you expect. So we're looking to see if TSM can bounce back from last week, to show that they've learned the patch, and that they truly are you know, one of the best teams. Okay, I'm running for Riva. I'm coming. We're going up They're going at me, they're pushing at me! Okay, I'm building. Victor, I'm flashed in. TP mid, TP mid. Kill Victor. Kill Victor, kill Victor. Go, 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 Victor flashed in. Yep. Q and one. Look at J4. Look at J4. Yes, flash, yes, flash. Back up, back up. Kevin's going, oh, Kevin's going. Okay, okay. Nice. I'm just going to go. Fresh, 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 fresh. Play on Kevin, play on Kevin. Uh, I'm on chill, I'm chill, I'm chill. Nice one, nice one. Keep going. Keep, keep going, going, keep going, keep going. Yes, flash, yes, flash, yes, flash. I go long, I go long. It's okay, it's okay, we got it, we got it. Yo, dragon, bot tower. Let's get dragon. Yeah, bot. I might need help on the dragon. We asked the question, how good will TSM look coming into this week? And that was a damn good game one performance from them. Where are we? Where are we? Rengar might go on me. Kill away, kill away. They're TPing. Oh, Rengar's on me, Rengar's on me. I'm fucking low, I'm fucking low. We got him. Play slow, play slow. Go on show, go on show, go on show. Come to me, taunt 10. I'm waiting on the generals. I'm waiting on the generals and I come back in. Okay. I'm on show. I'm coming back in now, I'm coming back in now. I'm jumping Guys, look at me, look at me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cho, cho, cho. I'm on show and thresh. I can jump, I can jump. I vote, I vote. I got Renga. Oh, I shoot, I shoot. Oh, Renga flash. Okay, okay. Let's go mid. Let's go mid. Yeah, oh, I got all okay. 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 I jump in. I will worry. Oh, I didn't. I have stunned in two. I have stunned in two. I have big stun here. I have big stun here. They're all stunned. They're all stunned. I go away. I go away. Okay. I'm looking at Renga. I have stunned in three. I have stunned in Renga. All right. Kill the Renga. Holy shit, Zach. Zach. Dennis is Zach. Why did, why did they, huh? they just left up Zach and Caitlyn? And Shen and Syndra and, and Shen. Blom. And, and Shen. Shen. Shen is open. <laughs> wow, Shen did so much. <laughs> Board. Flying Quest, another strong early game, but they couldn't actually transition it into anything because yep. the key members of TSM, Bjergsen and Doublet on these carries, were never put behind. All this attention on Hauntzer, what did it result in? I mean, Vince and I, we found our comfort picks pretty quickly in the split, and then we pretty much just branched out from there very slowly. And when it came to Rift Rivals, I think that was like sort of the peak of what we had been working towards is just this uh, very stable and very team focused style, but at the same time, like winning lane as much as possible while still picking champions that are good for the team comp. And now like people notice that we usually pick losing bot lane matchups in LCS. And I think that's definitely a lot worse than before. It's a lot more punishing than before. In part because the picks are different and the meta is different, and also I think NA bot lanes have gotten a lot better at punishing us for having a weak matchup. So it's kind of just we're like doubling down on in our effort to make sure that we have like a good bottom lane strategy and playstyle going because every bot lane has shaken it up with picks. Some teams play all in lane, some teams play Janna, uh, some teams are playing still Rakan for hard engage. Like every LCS team has their own take on bot lane, and so me and Vincent are trying to figure out what ours is and how it's going to fit the team and how we're still going to win lane and everything is just, we're working on it. Honestly, I didn't think too much about it. He still played pretty normally. I think it was because he had been playing solo queue for the entire split prior. So he was still able to quickly pick up on the things that we we're doing and he's been playing competitively for a very long time. And because of that, he has a lot of the knowledge that he's received from previous seasons and it just he's able to pick up really fast even though he hasn't played for a split and the meta might have changed Get up! Let's go! nice team atmosphere yeah pop just always gets me in fight mode fucking hyped <laughs> We're gonna need to do the huddle, dude. Oh. oh. Wait, huddle oh. three. No, 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 no. We have Please. to. 100% win rate. 100% yeah, win rate so no, far. No, no, no. Let's go. Let's go. One, two, three. Wait, Shen. Yes, um, oh, that was three. <laughs> 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 Everybody's always talking about Bjergsen and Double Lift, but Biofrost as well. You know, a lot of these guys are, are really stepping up big in the current meta. 
Um, the one thing is that they always talk about being a little bit slow to adapt to the meta, so yeah. uh, definitely excited to see what strategies they're going to pull off today. Yeah. I'm looking for Sun here. I cannot show. Okay, I'm show. 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 I'm holding it this time. Can I, I, I don't have ult now. Ult, sun in two. Uh, I have big Sun in two, big Sun in one, big Sun here. On Rexa. We're coming, we're coming. Flash. Okay, yeah, boys, spin it for it. He's close, so keep going, keep going. Okay, okay, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. more time, but he's still gonna go down. One for zero, two for zero. Vix finds another one onto Hakamo, and now the retreat is called. And Envy just forced to run away onto the fountain. The kill still coming through a third into the game, thanks to Birch, and that's gonna be the excess fall at 11 to 13 in kills, but it's TS South outscaling, winning the team fight to take in game one. When I pushed you, pulled me closer. Ages. Yep, Birch has slowed down. Here comes the Koei. A lot of damage. He has no flash. And it's gets the kill. Beautiful in Akko to land the slow to call. There's no flash. And now the re-engage by B4. Spent in the front lines. And Ulti on a Seraph. They're going to knock him right into the team. But he's going to find a stun. Oh. Right into the junglers. Can they get the damage? They've knocked down Dublin. There are no carries left. This should be a clean lead wave for Envy. They're going to blast all of them. Five for zero. 13 to 5 and kill. Double force to up, and he could be stunned at the chase. Then for Nisky, a triple kill out of the Lucian in the mid lane. They're going to go for number four, a quadra kill for Nisky. And it's only Bob Frost left alive. It's going to be Envy pulling off the victory. Nisky with four. Are you kidding me with that flash forward over Bjergsen's W to get the kill? The DSM's still poking around here. Now they're trying to just kind of delay. Oh, the flash ult, they're going to go for the kill. They don't quite get him. Yes, they do. Bio Frost knocks the kill down at the very end of it all. And now the chase is in 5v4. Can they get the knockback out of Zeal? A little bit they do, and actually the chase is in with Rocket Jump. You're going to get a 2 for 0. Now on the other side of the fight, it's a Cataclysm on a 2. The redemption by a bit of time, but Hanser going to get chopped in. Will they go down? He will not. The heals are through. Just the 2 for 0. Make that a third as Seraph will fall. He gets the trade. 3 for 1, but now it's 2v4 at TSM have the tools they need. Lower and lower on health. The Zaya has fallen. Apollo dies despite the summoners being down. Another kill coming through. All the turrets gone as well. And it's going to be TSM a missed chance from the crowd. Take it home two to one. TSM will end the week tied for first place. Looking for that playoff buy. It's fucking hard to do anything, but we have like, well, I mean like okay. winning bot lane every game, but in the first game, we failed the dive play, which is a play we have to do. And in this game, we lost ball. And in the second game, we didn't push our advantage like yeah. hard enough. So. I mean, from my perspective, it just feels like... Yeah, for you, it feels like shit, because we're not playing correctly. Right. You just go insane trying to... If you guys fuck up, then... Yeah. The game's really hard. I mean, at some point, they did match us, and I didn't know if we should just swap top and do Herald and give up bot tier two. Yeah. That was weird. There was a weird point for it. Yeah, and there was a time when... Their games just feel fucking weird. Yeah, I think I it's also because we have like the same comps. Like we have really similar comps. Yeah, we played Syndra... No, like, we have similar comps to them. So we kind of um, want to do the same thing in every game. Yeah, that's true. Slightly different. I also the think the MV plays really well. I thought they played pretty well. Too. Their early game is definitely... I mean, aren't they the best early game team? Yeah. Their early game is fucking super good. I think we played really bad game one and two. I think game three, we, we played okay with... Uh, how behind we were. Yeah. yeah. Let's you just get behind every really game. You guys were sort of down three and a half. Yeah. I mean, in general, I, I thought they played pretty well. We were I was trying to punch their ball in a lot when I was ahead, especially in game two, and it was just hard. Yeah. I think they're good at all the early game things. Yeah, I think we should just more call it to like what play we're going to make. Yeah. In yeah. Game two, at least. So the series against Envy was pretty tough. I think it's probably the longest best of three I've ever played in my career because game two and game three were so long. But yeah, I think Envy is just a pretty good team right now with their new mid lane on Niski and Lerot, they play pretty well. Um, I still feel like we should have been able to close out the game two. We had a lot of lane pressure and we just didn't really do anything, which is like a bad habit of ours on stage right now where we don't really have any set plays and we just like kind of sit back and not do much. So it's something we've been working on in swims now just to make more plays. But yeah, def Envy is definitely a pretty good team right now. So yeah, it was pretty hard series. We have one week left of regular split and I believe if we go 2-0, we'd get the buy for sure. I think we might be first place right now, but I, I don't really watch the standings. I don't really follow the standings. I just kind of have a feel throughout the split of how strong our team is, and I think right now our team is doing okay, but I don't feel like a first place team. I don't think we perform like a first place team, but this last week of regular split really sets the tone for playoffs, and 
I want to have a convincing last week so the teams are actually scared of facing us in playoffs. So our match versus CLG is the most important, I think, because it's possible that we won't even be top two if we lose to them and then lose to P1. Uh, but our goal is to get the first seed. We should 2-0 and then we have a better game record than IMT. So there won't even be a tiebreaker if we have a better game record, we'll just be the first seed automatically. I think the CLG game is important because they're another top team and, and seeding is really important for playoffs. Like I said, NA is the strongest it's ever been and the top six teams are super good. I expect a lot of upsets in playoffs and uh, I don't want to be a part of any of those upsets. So being first seed is extremely important. And we have been slumping recently. I think week nine is a good indication of like, can we recover from that and make sure that we're actually good for playoffs? Or, you know, is it kind of just stagnated for our team and we haven't improved as much as we should have. So yeah, CLG is a hard opponent, but I think we should be able to win.